Hi there everyone, in this video we're looking at cell signalling. So we're talking about signals being transmitted between cells and there are quite a few different ways that this could happen. Um, but basically we're talking about a signalling pathway. So when we get a stimulus, that stimulus will trigger uh, something to happen um, in the receptor which then causes a signal to be sent to the effector and then we get a response. And this bit here from receptor to effector is where the, uh, the, the message is transmitted, so the signal is transmitted. Um, and this could take place in several different ways. So it could be a hormone, we could have a neurotransmitter, which is how the, the signal is transmitted to the effector. There could be an electrical impulse, and it could even be cell-to-cell -cell contact. So we see that particularly um, when an embryo is developing. So in terms of how the signal gets from receptor to um, from receptor to effector, again, it could be a very short distance that that signal has to travel. It could be long distance, um, and there could be multiple different components and mechanisms um, along the route and different interactions that might take place. So it doesn't just have to be one of these, um, it could be some sort of combination. The main thing that we're going to look at now is what happens when that signal gets to the cell, because when the signal gets to the cell, we obviously have a cell surface membrane, and that cell surface membrane is a barrier, separates the inside of the cell from the outside, um, and it obviously controls what goes in. So what happens at that cell surface membrane is quite important. So what you can see here is um, our phospholipid bilayer, and this is a receptor molecule. When a signaling molecule arrives at the cell, um, depending on what kind of signal, signaling molecule it is, then a couple of things could happen. So first of all, if a signaling molecule comes in, and if that signaling molecule um, is uh, lipid-based, so it's able to pass through the phospholipid membrane, then it does just that. It's able to just pass straight through the hydrophobic core and it can go directly into the cell. So um, any hydrophobic signaling molecule can do that. The steroid hormones are an example, for example, estrogen. However, a lot of signaling molecules that come in um, are unable to pass through the hydrophobic membrane and instead they have to bind to a receptor molecule. Now, this receptor molecule here is specific to this signaling molecule. So that means that the signaling molecule is only able to bind to receptors on cells which have that specific receptor. And when the signaling molecule binds to the receptor, um, it triggers changes inside the cell. So the first thing that happens is that the receptor molecule uh, will change shape in some way. And that change in shape will then trigger the activation of a G protein. When the G protein is activated, it signals to another protein in the cell surface membrane, which is an enzyme. And the G protein causes that enzyme to make molecules, which we call a second messenger. Now what you can see is that um, we only have one G protein which is activated, but we end up with a lot of second messenger molecules. Okay, so one receptor, sorry, one signaling molecule bounds, binds to the receptor, and the G protein then causes a lot of second messenger molecules to be produced, even though only one signaling molecule was there in the first place. So we call this amplification. So the original signal, that original one signaling molecule has been amplified so that we now have a large number of second messengers. Now these second messengers um, are also signaling molecules, they're just signaling molecules that are now inside the cell um, and they're very small, they spread out throughout the cell and as they spread throughout the cell they activate enzymes. And those enzymes then activate other enzymes. 
Um, and as you can see here, you know, one enzyme molecule is able to obviously activate um, many other enzyme molecules. So what you get again is more amplification. So each second messenger molecule activates an enzyme which can then activate many other enzymes which can activate many other enzymes. This whole process is called a signaling cascade. So if you look at it, it's sort of a little bit like a waterfall. You know, one thing happens which then flows down, causes another thing and another thing and another thing. It's a cascade. Um, it's a whole series of events which take place sort of one after the other as a result of an initial um, event, so the initial activation of that G protein. Eventually, and obviously exactly which enzymes are activated and how many of them are in the signaling cascade will depend, depend it will change depending on um, the signaling molecule which bound to the receptor, you know, what, what that signaling molecule was, but eventually will end up with the enzyme causing some kind of response. So that will be some kind of metabolic change which takes place. Um, the response could be the secretion of some sort of substance. Um, it could be a response which leads to the transcription of a particular gene, which then would produce a certain protein in the cell. Um, some kind of movement might take place, um, and as I said, the metabolic change. But all of these responses take place as a result of the initial signaling molecule which bound to the protein receptor on the cell surface membrane. Okay, um, as I said, there, you know, cell signaling is very complex. There are other things as well that go on, but that's a description of the um, sort of the main cell signaling pathway that involves a second messenger, uh, which you need to know about. Thanks very much.